Well, welcome everybody. My name is Nick Mancini. We're starting a brand new series called Supernatural. Tonight, we're going to be talking about how there's this whole unseen world going on around us that's happening every single day that we often don't know is happening. And then in the next week, we're going to talk about how God's power is over the whole entire supernatural world and what that means for our lives. Then in week three, I'm going to answer questions that you may have about the supernatural world. You can ask any questions that you want, like angels, demons, God, Satan, zombies, puberty. Uh, well, let's not answer questions about that, but let's keep it supernatural. That'll be week three. But before we dive in tonight, here's what I want you guys to do. I want you to think about how many of you, by show of hands out there, how many of you have ever been on a bad date? Raise your hand been on a bad date, hands going up all over the place, or maybe you've been like in a bad relationship, raise your hand a little bit. Uh, if you haven't raised your hand to any of that, you might be the bad date. That could, could be potentially the case. Well, I remember a long time ago, a few years back, I started dating this girl. It was a brand new relationship. And we're driving down the road in my car, and I looked down at the gas gauge, and I realized my gas tank is starting to get empty. So I decided I need to pull over, and get gas. So I pull off to the gas station, and I get out of my car, walk around the car, and uh, pull out the gas nozzle, put it in the car, you know, do the uh, pump thing, that hands-free thing, that's where I can walk away from it. So I walk around to the side of where she's sitting, and I'm about to open up the car door, and she makes this face on the other side of the, the window. She sort of gives this, like, terrified look, like, <gasps> like she's nervous, like a deer in a headlights. And I'm, I'm thinking for a second, like, what's, what's going on there? So I go and I open the car door. And as I open the car door, I am met with this stench that comes wafting out of the car of gas, but it's not from the gas station, <laughs> into my nose. And it's so thick that I can almost taste it. And I don't know what to do here. So I just look at her and I'm like, uh, did you just fart? And she looks at me and gives me this like nervous giggle, like, I thought what you were going to do is like go into the gas station and pay. So when you went in, I was going to roll down the window and just like waft it out. And, and so you would never know. And I was like, well, I can tell. I mean, it is strong. It is thick. It is, it is chewable. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> See, outside the car, it all looked the same. Looking into the car, everything looked like everything was in order. But as soon as that door opened, there was something going on in there. I mean, all hell was breaking loose, and I had no idea, because I couldn't see it on the outside. That, that's what the supernatural world is all about. It's this realm out there that we can't see. It's a place where good and evil meet, where angels and demons collide, and it's happening all around us. But we often can't see it. Look at what it says in Ephesians 6, 12. It says this, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities in the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Ooh, it's kind of creepy, isn't it? It's a little like, whew. But that's what this verse is saying. It's, we're not fighting against flesh and blood. We're fighting against evil rulers in the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in heavenly places. This is how it looks in our world. Not too long ago, I was talking to one of our youth pastors, and he, was, uh, he and some of his friends had went to a Starbucks, and they met this girl at Starbucks who they started talking to, and as they got to know her story, they started to discover that there were some things that weren't quite going right in her life. So this youth pastor and some of the other staff members were like, man, it would be a great idea if you could just come to church. Maybe it would give you some hope that you need in your life. And she looks at them and she says, okay, I'll come check out church. I'll, I'll see what it's all about. Well, Sunday rolls around. Guess what? She doesn't show up. So they go back to the Starbucks the, that week, and they were like, Hey, uh, we were looking for you. Uh, where were you? She's like, oh, I had some stuff going on. I couldn't make it. And so like, well, church is this Sunday too if you'd like to come. 
And she's like, I will be there. I'll be there. So Sunday comes around, and guess what happens? Well, actually what happens is they wait for her, and she never shows up. But then they go back to Starbucks, and they're like, hey, uh, you weren't at church on Sunday. She's like, actually, you know what? I I went to church. I went, but I I couldn't get out of my car. I just stayed in my car. And, And it's like, okay, you just stayed in your car. But So think about this, though. Here's this girl from a very physical standpoint. Here's this girl sitting in her car, and she can't or doesn't go into a building that's made of wood and concrete, right? That's very real world. But from a spiritual standpoint, here's this girl who's dealing with tormented things in her life, some darkness going on in her life, and she shows up at church, a place of worship, not just a building, a place where God is being glorified and God is being worshiped and people are responding to the creator of the universe. And she can't go in there. See, real world, she's just a girl and she chooses not to go in a building. But from a supernatural standpoint, somebody who's dealing with heavy stuff can't go into a place of worship to God. That's what the supernatural is all about. Supernatural. Think about the word supernatural, right? How about a hero? Think about a normal hero, maybe somebody who saves a life. But a superhero, right? That's your Batman. That's your Spider-Man. That's your Superman. That's kind of your Wonder Woman, I guess, maybe. But a superhero is somebody who possesses powers that human beings don't have. The supernatural is a place that is above us, bigger than us, greater than us, than what we can understand. It's a place where there's a battle going on. A battle for your souls, a battle for you, a battle against good and evil to get you to do right or wrong. But you ever thought about why? Have you ever thought about like why all this? Why is this going on? Why isn't there just a world where everybody's happy and holding hands and singing kumbaya and and everything's fine? We're a world where there's no pain or sickness or death or, or arguments or fights. Like, why couldn't life just be fine and dandy? Well, we have to go all the way back to the creation of time. There was a time where God was in heaven with all of the angels. And there was this one particular angel named Lucifer. We know him as Satan or the devil. He was actually an angel at one point, and he protected God's glory. He was around God all the time, and he was one of his right-hand man angels. But Lucifer, Satan, became jealous of God. He wanted what God had. He wanted to be worshipped. He wanted to be the creator of things. And so he plans and he plots and he schemes. And he's able to rally up a third of the other angels in heaven and say, let's let's try and turn this place upside down. And so there's this huge battle that takes place in heaven against a third of the angels in heaven and Satan. Well, we know what happens, right? Right? The third of the angels and Satan, they don't stand a chance against God, right? There's no chance that they can win this battle. So God sends them down out of heaven, down to earth. And the Bible says that Satan roams around like a lion looking for someone to devour. And that is why we have spiritual warfare and spiritual battles going on. I thought about sharing this story with you guys, and I had to debate on whether I wanted to share this story. But I think I want to share it because I think it makes a point that I want to make. How many of you have ever had a dream where, like, you're starting to fall asleep, and you can't tell if you're, like, awake or sleeping? Raise your hand if you've ever experienced that. Like, you're, like, you're half dreaming, you're half awake, and you're, like, I don't know what's going on. Well, this, this happened to me uh, a couple months back. I started to fall asleep, and as I was falling asleep, kind of in that in-between moment, like, am I awake, am I asleep? All of a sudden, as I drifted off to sleep, there were these giant, dark shadows that just started swooping around my bedroom. 
these giant shadows just swooping around, and every once in a while, one of them would swoop down and pounce down on top of my chest. And it felt like a thousand pounds were just pressing down on me. And I, I remember going, I can't, and I could not breathe, and I was just crying for help, and then I woke up. Nothing in my room. And then I started drifting off back to sleep at halfway point again. Same thing happened. These big, giant, shadowy figures started swooping around my room, pressing down on my chest. I couldn't breathe. I was crying for help, but nothing was coming out. And then I woke up again. Well, about a week later, I was actually at work in real life, and I started having these really bad chest pains, like a pain where my heart was tightening and it started swooping down my right or my left arm. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm gonna have a heart attack. Like this is painful. So I went to the emergency room and I got all these tests done and the doctors couldn't find anything. There was nothing wrong with me. Now I have to believe that there was a spiritual attack going on in my life in that moment, that there was this spiritual warfare taking place. Now here's why I tell you this story. Because there's some of you out there that are like, oh my gosh, Nick, I can't believe that happened to you. That's, that's crazy. That's insane. But there's others of you who are going, Nick, that's crazy. You're crazy. You're insane. You're weird. That's weird. I don't, uh, I don't know what I think about that stuff. And that's exactly my point. When we talk about the supernatural world, when we talk about angels and demons, we start going like, Oof, that's weird. Why, why do we talk about that? But here's the thing. Satan's greatest lie is to convince the world that he doesn't exist. Because if we don't believe in this stuff, we don't think it's real, we just start wandering around like, yeah, oh, everything's fine and dandy. There's a spiritual world going on around us, and they are wreaking havoc in our lives. And if we don't know and realize that it's taking place, they're going to do whatever they want, and they can, they can have us however they want, and we won't even know. But if we believe it and we start to understand it, then we can step in and do something about it. We can pray against those attacks. We can identify where we're being attacked in our life and go, you know what, not to me. This isn't happening to me. We become aware of it. Now, I want to clarify something. Before we get over spiritual here and go, oh my gosh, I wonder if I'm being spiritually attacked by demons in my life, we need to understand something. There's a difference between a spiritual attack and consequences. There's a difference between spiritual attack and consequences. A consequence would be something like this. You know you have a test in a couple days, right? And you go, eh, I'm not gonna study. I'm just gonna show up, see what happens, you know? And so you take that test, you fill it out, you give it to the teacher, and then the teacher a day later or two days later slaps that test on your desk with a big, fat, red F circled at the top of the page. You failed. What you can't do is walk around to your friends like, man, I failed that test, man. I got some demons in me, you know? I got some, oh, man, I'm being attacked by Satan, man. Satan just blocked my mind from knowing the answers. <laughs> no, you're a bonehead and you didn't study. That's a consequence to your actions. But a spiritual attack is anything that is true about you or true about who God is or true about God's plans for your life and you start hearing or believing or understanding something different than that. A spiritual, is anything, a spiritual attack is anything that challenges your self-worth. If you feel like you're not good enough, if you feel like you don't measure up, like you're not attractive enough, like you're not talented enough or you're not smart enough, that no one could love you, that's a spiritual attack. Because God says, you are good enough. You are talented enough. I have made you for a purpose. I have a plan for your life. I have made you you, and I have destined you for great things. That is God's truth. The rest of that is just spiritual attack in your life. Other spiritual attacks can come in the form of depression, now, that in and of itself isn't a spiritual attack. Sometimes we do need to take care of that in other kind of ways, but, but it, there is a spiritual dynamic to that. Depression, a spiritual attack of worry, stress, anxiety, some of that leading to, 
to cutting and stuff like that. Spiritual attacks come in the form of only caring about yourself and, and not thinking about others or hurting other people. Because God says, don't worry. Have joy. Love life and love other people. Love yourself and value yourself. That is God's truth. The rest of that is just spiritual attack. So how do we fight against spiritual attack? Look at what it says in Ephesians 6.12. We read that earlier. But we're going to continue on here. Look at what it says here. This is, this is good stuff. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. This is what we just read. Against mighty powers in the dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, Put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be standing firm. Stand your ground. Put on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on peace that comes from the good news so that you will fully be prepared. In addition to all these, hold up the shield of faith that will stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on the salvation as your helmet and take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Now, at first glance, we read this verse and it's like, wait, what? Spiritual armor, belts and swords and shields and stuff like that? Like, are you telling me according to this verse, we're supposed to like garb up in, in, in armor and show up at school and like show up and like clink, 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 clink. And your friends are like, dude, what are, what are you doing? It's like, just wearing the full armor of God here. Like, well, you look like an idiot. You know, like th that's not what this is saying. That's not what this verse is about. What, th what this verse is about, it's about being at peace with who God has made you to be. It's about diving into God's word and reading your Bible and understanding who God has made you to be. When we start to spend time with God, then we start to understand how to defend ourselves against spiritual attack. So I want to give you five quick ways, really, really quick. You're like, five, shoot, this is going long already. Five quick ways, really quick, on how to fight against spiritual attack. Number one, believe it's real and understand it. We've talked about this a lot. If you believe it's real and you understand it, you can fight against it. You can stand against the attacks that are going on in your life. You can identify them and go, you know what? This is just an attack in my life. I can do something about it. The second thing, I said these are going to be quick. The second thing is know what truth is. The best way we can know what truth is is by reading our Bibles and understanding what is true about God, what's true about us, what's true about the way he's created us. Because when we understand truth and those lies start coming in, we can stand our ground on God's truth. Number three, pray against it. There is so much power in prayer that when you feel like you're being attacked in this life, pray against it. God's power is so strong in prayer. So number one, know that it's real and understand it. Number two, know what truth is. Number three, pray against it. Number four, worship. Worship God. Because when we worship God, it reminds us of who he is and what he's done in our lives. And then the fifth thing is talk it out with other people. Talk it out with other people. God gave us other people so that we can, when we're going through hard times, we can talk it out with each other and help each other out and pray for each other so that we can be there for each other and help each other overcome whatever attacks or whatever problems we may have in our life. Talk it out with other people. So let me ask you this question. Where are you being attacked in your life? What areas in your life do you know are, are under attack? Maybe for some of you, it's partying and drinking or hooking up because you do these things because you think that it's going to make you feel better about yourself and you want it to stop and you know it's, there's just something not right about it, but you keep finding yourself back in it. For others of you, maybe it's problems with your friends or if there's crazy situations going on in your family. And as you look around those situations, you know, man, there's just there's something not right about this. 
Maybe for you, it is in the good enoughs, the not good enoughs. I'm not smart enough. I'm not talented enough. People don't like me. I'll never be popular enough or talented enough or attractive enough, whatever that is. Maybe it's in the not enoughs. So where are you being spiritually attacked in your life? I want everybody right now to close your eyes and bow your heads. Now, there's some of you out there who have realized tonight that you are, in fact, under spiritual attack. There are situations going on in your life, and you need God's help with those. There's all different problems and situations and spiritual attacks going on. If that's you and you're going, you know what, I realize that tonight, and I'm going to do whatever it takes to fight against those attacks. When I get back home, I'm going to step into those and realize that those are spiritual attacks, and I will step in and do something about that. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand right now. Raise your hand right now if you know that there's stuff going on in your life. Let me pray for you really quick. God, I just pray for those students who are, who are under spiritual attack, where there are things going on in their lives that just aren't right. God, I pray that they would remember to put on the full armor of God and equip themselves to stand against Satan's attacks. I pray that you would give them very practical ways to step in and combat those spiritual attacks, God, that you would help them overcome. We give you those students. It's in your name. Now, with eyes still closed and heads still bowed, there's some of you in here tonight and you never even really thought about this whole spiritual world. Let alone angels and demons, you weren't even sure about God. But tonight, something clicked inside of you. Maybe tonight, you felt something stirring inside of you. Let me tell you what that is. That's a supernatural world. That is God's presence dwelling inside you, going like, I'm here for you. I love you. I, I want to be with you. I want to spend time with you. I want you to know me. If you've never known or accepted God's love before, but tonight it, it stuck with you. It, it got to you. For the very first time, you want to accept that Jesus died on the cross for you and that there is a God who loves you. I want you to raise your hand right now. Raise your hands up. Put them up in the air all over the place. Raise your hands. 